So yes, we are going to, we're not going to do math today, but we're going to talk about math. And we're going to talk about the space between what we think we can do and what we can do, kids in general, as well as women in particular. We always hear perfectly educated adults say, you know, I'm just not good at math. I just can't do that. Now what's interesting is, as human beings, we are capable of learning basic math skills just like reading. And we never hear adults say, you know, I'm just not good at reading. I just can't do that. But it is perfectly acceptable to say, I can't do math. And why is that? So let's start by exploring that. How many of you saw that and kind of went, ew? <laughs> what that is is math anxiety. And it becomes a very real and tangible thing in people who have it. Researchers have shown that when people who have math anxiety do math or think they're about to do math, they will actually have the parts of their brain light up that are the same ones for feeling physical pain. You can see it on the MRI. Math actually hurts if it makes you anxious. And what's really sad is it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you have math anxiety, you will actually perform worse because all that heightened activity blocks your working memory. It really makes it harder to do it. Now, the saddest thing about it, which brings us here today, is that women do feel much more math anxiety than men. In really little kids, there's not much of a difference. But by sixth grade, young women are twice as likely to feel high math anxiety as the boys. And that continues all the way through adulthood. In fact, it, women start to stereotype themselves. If you give men and women a quiz with math, and at, for some of them, at the beginning, they're asked to check off their gender, whether they're male or female. The women who check off, who are, have on their test, asking them to check off their gender, do worse than the women who didn't have that question. Just being reminded you're female makes you do worse on a math test, which is incredible. And several studies have validated this. So that's where we are. And then you say, well, sure, well, you know, can you just not do math, just don't get a job in that kind of career arena, and you should be fine. Well, it's funny because this summer there was a very controversial op-ed called, Is Algebra Necessary? I don't know if some of you remember that. Well, I would argue it is because basically, whether you realize it or not, you're solving for X every day of your life all, in all arenas. Career is one of them. You might have a job where you do math. But the fact is, everything else you do, negotiating for small things or big things, as a consumer, when you buy things, when you're offered deals, a study found that if you offer people a cup of coffee for a third off the price, or you offer them a full cup plus an extra third for the regular price, which one should you take? They're not the same. The better deal is the third off the price, because you're paying two thirds per ounce versus three quarters, but everybody takes the, the extra third of a cup. And retailers know that we're not going to do the math, and they take advantage of that. They could give us a deal that we feel good about. Sometimes retailers actually jip themselves. A friend emailed me a couple of weeks ago that uh, he was at a restaurant where that night they were having a special on the wine. Bottles that were $60 or more were 30% off, but bottles that were $80 or more we're 50% off. Well, <laughs> at 60 and 80, the better bottle is cheaper. It's 40 bucks instead of 42. And if you don't know the math, you're not going to necessarily uh, catch that deal. And if you're the owner of the restaurant, you're really losing out. Now, I think um, the most obvious deal that is bad for us is the lottery. I know that sometimes people win. But the fact is, it has been found that if you drive five miles to a convenience store, buy a lottery ticket and drive home, you are more likely to die on the trip than win the lottery. <laughs> OK? I mean, you're not really putting your life at that much risk, but you are setting your money on fire. It's not a deal you should take. Now, these are all small ticket items, but they add up, because that's what numbers do. And of course, sometimes you have the big ticket items, buying a car, buying a house, managing your personal finances, understanding how your credit card works and how debt works. And if you are nervous about numbers and you're not going to dig in, you're going to be at more of a disadvantage. And we as women, if we are that much more nervous, it's that much worse for us. So what I'd like to do is talk about what happens to us from birth all the way to becoming adults, all the factors that affect how we are introduced to math 
and how we feel about it and see if we can tease out what's going on. So first, you're born. That's easy. You're told when and where to show up. But in fact, a lot of things are decided for you. For one thing, your mom is twice as likely as your dad to hate math. If you're a girl, that's your primary role model. Also, both your mom and your dad are more likely to believe that their young sons can learn math younger and more easily than their daughters. And that's subtle, but it's going to pervade all your interactions around math. Then you have preschool age. You're going from birth all the way up to kindergarten. Now, we all know that the home environment is incredibly important for setting the stage for academic success. It's been shown that your preschool affects you only one third as much as what goes on in the home. We also know, and parents know this, that early math skills are incredibly important for predicting your, your academic future. We all know math is incredibly important, but when you ask parents, what do you do with your kids every day or on a regular basis, this is where it shakes out. Bedtime math just did its own study with Eagleton Institute at Rutgers, and this is where it came out. Now, we're really psyched about the reading. That's awesome. Parents know that they should read a bedtime story every night. But what about math? It's a lot lower. And in fact, I founded Bedtime Math just to raise awareness about this exact point, that math should be on equal footing, because right now it's not. Let's dive into the whole reading thing a little bit more. This chart shows the top 100 books on Amazon within kids' educational books at back to school time a couple of months ago. Now, right off the bat, you can see that the numbers are very different. There are 27 ABC books versus a third as many for math. But what I found incredibly eye-opening when I looked at this was the titles. So the reading ones, Dr. Seuss, Z is for moose, there's an A is for ketchup, they're fun, they're lively, they're for all ages of kids. You look at the math ones, <laughs> math made easy grade two, math made easy grade four, it's all workbooks. Drill, 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 not fun. The only fun book was that bottom slice, that's one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish. <laughs> It's dubious to call it a math book. It counts to five. <laughs> That's how hard it, high it goes. Now, what's interesting is I've been watching how it's changed over time. And as of this morning, all the workbooks are gone. There's hardly any math at all. There is a connect the dots drawing book, which is awesome, and the fish. That's it. But we see what happens is that when parents are thinking about how do I get my kid ready for life, they're doing all the ABCs and not the one, two, threes. And if you're lucky enough to get some math before kindergarten, it's probably pretty structured and, and not much fun. Then you go to school. All those things I just mentioned about the books and whether parents are watching videos versus doing math affect all kids. But once you get to school, it starts to be different for the girls versus the boys. So for one, just like your parents have stereotypes about boys and girls doing math, so do your teachers. Studies have shown that teachers when their female students do well at math, they assume it's because they worked hard. When the boys do well, they assume it's because they're naturally good at it. It's a very different way of looking at it. Also, if you're going to go to your teacher for help, that can be a problem because elementary school teachers, a lot of them are not strong at math. There are some who are fabulously qualified all the way across the board, but our bar is very low for becoming an elementary school teacher and having math skills. As of a few years ago, the Massachusetts state licensing test, you could get every single math question wrong and still pass and become an elementary school teacher. And a lot of states around the country, there are teacher colleges, you only have to get like 40% of the test right to go in and, and become a, a teacher. So that really has to change. Now, of course, if teachers are not feeling comfortable about how they do math, they have math anxiety. 90% of elementary school teachers are female, and they are one of the most math-phobic cohorts to come out of our undergraduate schools. And because they're female, again, that's a role model for the girls. Their negative impact on their students is five times higher for the girls than the boys. This is, this is reality, not perception. Then, of course, you go home and you do your homework with your mom, who is far more likely than your dad to feel like she can't help you because she can't do the math, and is also more likely to think that helping you with your homework isn't really going to do much for you anyway. So then you might go for outside help, 
like a place like Kumon. Now let me ask you, look at that face. <laughs> Does that face make you want to do math? I mean, what, what are we signaling? Now, and this brings up a whole other point, which is our culture. Math is not a popular subject. There are a lot of people that find math kind of geeky and yucky and awful, and there are signals like that. Again, what's sad is that a lot of those signals are targeted specifically at girls. You may remember Teen Talk Barbie. This is the one who said when you pressed a button, math class is tough. <laughs> now she got pulled from the shelves, and that was in the late 1990s, and we would like to think we're more enlightened now, but we're not. This t-shirt is from a year ago. I'm too pretty to do my homework, so my brother does it for me. It could have at least said sister. That would have helped. <laughs> and then, of course, this year we had allergic to algebra at Forever 21. Again, this is not helping. So it's no surprise that when girls get to high school and college and there's an opportunity to study math and science at the higher levels that there's not a lot of interest. When I went to high school 20 some odd years ago, senior year, physics AP class, I was one out of 25, one girl out of 25 kids. It was me and 24 guys. And I will tell you, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> the fact that I could get through that. Then I went to college, it was a little more enlightened, but you know, in the astrophysics department, I was the only girl for my year, or the class ahead, or the class behind. And it's interesting, because as the time has gone on, and there's been so much awareness about STEM, and about you know, women, and our empowerment, I thought, well, it's got to be getting better. But you know what? It's not getting better fast enough. We still have this discrepancy. If you look at now, this is not a math test. This is an eye test to see if you can read that. <laughs> if you look at a chart showing, these, this is a full array of college majors and the average starting salary of kids coming out of that major, regardless of what job they took. So this is not a measure of whether jobs using English pay more than jobs using communications. It's showing what's the value of that person in the marketplace. How much do employers value someone with that major? It starts around 30K, going all the way up into the six figures. What I've done is put with that the percentage of people in each major who are women. Now, you know, it, it kind of zigzags along, but what I find so troubling is how it just plummets when you get to these high paid paying majors. And if you zoom in and look at what these majors are, they are all math and science. And in fact, it holds true for mid-career salaries too. If you look at the top 10 highest paid majors, it is all math and science. And as we see, some of them, some of them are barely cracking a third women, but some of them are as low as 9%. This is an opportunity for women to be valuable, and we are not taking it. And that brings us back to adulthood. We talked a little bit about some of the things you have to do on a daily basis. And career now is in that mix, too. Again, if we are not seizing numbers and doing things with them, we are always putting ourselves at a bit of a disadvantage. And what's really interesting is that if you're a mom with math anxiety and you have a daughter, it's a cycle. It really is a life cycle, and we have to break that cycle. So let's talk, to be a little more upbeat, about solutions. Oh, that feels good. There's an answer. That's what we want. <laughs> so we've talked about all the different things that can affect how we look at math. It's our parents. It's products that are out there. It's our teachers. It's our culture. So what can we all do? How do we change this? Well, for starters, parents moms with their daughters should be doing math. They should be doing math with their sons too, but particularly their daughters. If you're a mom, no matter how much you hate math, if you can count from one to 20, you know more math than your baby. You have something to teach. You can do it, right? We also know that there are products out there. There are great books about math. They just don't get found and they don't make it up onto the top 100 on Amazon, but it's out there. And for all the little people in your life, whether it's your own kids or someone else's kids, buy a girl accounting book. Or if she's older, buy her a robotics set. Lego makes these great sets that, where you build flamingos that twirl and monkeys that play drums. They're so colorful and cute. They're just as good for girls as for boys. Next time you're going to look to think about buying a gift, shake it up a little and, and maybe consider doing that. Teachers have to change their mindset also. 
not only at how they look at girls and boys, but also the desire to train up and really feel solid about math. But I think the most insidious one is really how do we change our culture? That's steering a big ship. And, but we're all a part of it. For one, we should not be saying we hate math or can't do it, right? And it's also what we do, not just what we say. We don't need a show of hands, but I would like everybody to look deep down in their heart of hearts and ask yourself, have you ever slid the check across the table and said, could someone figure out the tip? That is so pathetic. I hear people say this. Don't ever do that. And if your girlfriend does it, tell her she's pathetic and never to do that again. It is not helping. It is not hard to figure out a tip. If you ever need to explain to somebody how to figure out the tip, you take the bill before tax and divide by five, that's 20%. It's easy. And dividing by five is easy because that's like dividing by 10 and then doubling. So you just move the dot over and double the number and you've got it. And then you can tinker if the server spilled something on you. <laughs> but it's not hard. So we're not going to play the lottery. We're not going to say we hate math. And we're not going to ask for help with the tip. All of these things are so important because, you know, Every time we do these things, we're signaling. And if we're not signaling, signaling to each other that we think we're smart, how are we going to convince the guys? How are we going to be taken seriously at the car dealer, in court, at work, getting paid fairly for our work? All of these things matter. And look, we can shortchange ourselves, but it is really unfair to set an example for the next generation of girls who are watching us and hearing us say these things and seeing us do things that show that we're afraid of math. We've just got to break it. So the good news is this can be changed. It is in all our power to fix this, to embrace math, to brush up, get online, watch a Khan Academy video. If you already are good at math and love math, share that. Give math things as gifts, and especially to the girls you know, because we have to show that we are not allergic to algebra. Girls can do math. Thank you.